totally disagree with the RBI's explanation. RBI gave two reasons. The first reason was it was necessary to introduce the 2,000 rupee note to meet the immediate requirements of the people. But within 15 days or 30 days of the 2,000 rupee note, nobody was using the 2,000 rupee note. No shopkeeper was accepting it. No service provider was accepting it. And in fact, if the bank cashier gave you 2,000 rupee note, most people returned it and said, no, I don't want the 2,000 rupee note, give me 100 rupee notes. So the people did not want 2,000 rupee note, which is why 50% of the 2,000 rupee notes remains in the vaults of the bank. It didn't even come to the people. People did not accept it. The second reason is even more amusing. The second reason is the shelf life of a 2,000 rupee note is four to five years. If a 2,000 rupee note, which does not change hands more than once a day, if the shelf life is five years, what is the shelf life of a 100 rupee note? What is the shelf life of a 50 rupee note? What is the shelf life of a 20 rupee note? Which changes hands 100 times a day. So what do you do? Old notes are taken back and new notes. Why do you withdraw it? It is a complete failure. It was a foolish move. And why I say the integrity of the currency system is in question is, tell me any other country which has introduced a 2,000 rupee note or a 2,000 dollar note or a 2,000 pound note and withdrawn it? Which country has demonetized in the last 50 years? Which country has issued currencies and taken it back? As far as I know, in America, the $100 note has been there for 100 years. The British pound, 50 pound, has been there for over 100 years. So every reason given by the RBI is a foolish reason because they don't want to admit that the original decision to introduce the 2,000 rupee note was a foolish decision. Strictly, he knows very well that these are decisions being taken by the RBI on the 2000 note. So I, and I should presume that these are questions asked of the RBI, they will be able to answer. So um, first thing first, currency is a sovereign business and decision on the currency is taken by the central bank and when it is a question of which is continuing to be legal tender, the government's permission is sought. So these are processes and due diligences which both RBI and the government will follow duly to cast aspersions on matters of this nature, currency, decision of a central bank, and to throw comparisons with other countries. It doesn't augur well for a finance minister who's seen it being in the ministry and to very quickly judge something as being not good, it is foolish, it is wise. A government which lasted for 10 years, in which for a large part he was the finance minister. There are several questions which we have raised in the parliament. We have not had a substantial answer coming from them. So I would think it is better for all of us to understand the situation and uh, provide observations which behold people holding such office, which are, how can I put it, which are commensurate with the office that he held and not be frivolous about commenting and judging things.